like us to pray from the book of Hebrews chapter Hebrews chapter 12 and beginning from verse 12 Hebrews 12 12 wherefore lift up the hands that which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lamed be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed it says lift up the hands that hang down it says strengthen the feeble knees it says make straight paths for your feet so that that which is lame will not be turned out of the way, but rather heal. And there is this discontent that has flooded the space. The psychology of Nigeria now is that of defeat and depression. But the Bible says that we should lift up the hands which hang down. The journey is not yet done. We we'll still need to be at the polls again during the weekend. And at this rate of depression it might be difficult so we want to send prayer to diffuse this defeatist spirit that is on the hearts of men it said lift up the hands that hang down strengthen the feeble knees so that they that are lame will not be turned out of the way but rather experience healing can we send prayers to heal Send prayers that the spirit of courage will be restored on the hearts of men. The battle is not yet over. We are still in contention for our destiny. We still seek actualization as a people. The forces that want to keep us in captivity have no knowledge that the day of our liberty has already been proclaimed. So we strengthen the hands which hang down we bring succor to the feeble knees. We straighten out the paths that are crooked so that the lame will not be turned out of the way but rather find an opportunity for healing. Cry. Strength comes upon the nation afresh. Strength comes upon her people. We forbid the kidnap of a nation. The, the kidnap of the hope of, of a nation. We forbid it. So we strengthen. We strengthen Nigeria through prayer. That the willpower to arise again and go to the polls this weekend will be supplied by the power of the Spirit. It's our time of emancipation. The day of our liberty has been proclaimed. Our time of servitude under the hand of tax masters have ended. Liberty comes to us. Liberation comes to us. Deliverance comes to us. Strengthen the hands that hang down. capacity to the knees that are feeble. Oh my God. We cannot yield to discouragement. We cannot yield to despair. Destiny is upon us. Destiny is upon us. Come on, I can tell you. Rosa Cabo Consehi Mahabros Cabelite Isa Makanda Baboria, Asiko Presco Felambrela, Uka Baba Centoria, Presco Fatila, Hataboko Tobina, Rakaita Canceli, Ebrasque Toben Salabonda, Akedo Bonseke, Labros Catabonda Sima Landelia, Rosca Baba Ike Santo, La Calabon Same, La Cabresco Belantelia. Ika Santa Babonde Kebreski Zubriatonde 
ya duske braminate es compele si compra catunda apayandos rescote la ike la catamina salia en como un condo isca rescata la babonde a la curia a la samanata a la que es compra de a la samba santa baboria es si compre manta pre y a casandoria y estos cabalande isco babordale y es como rasile tal in the name Jesus, I think it was like um, five years ago, five years, yeah, I was still walking in Lagos and I was coming back home from work and the Lord spoke to me and he said, when your nation will be delivered, it will be done by the youth. Yeah, and you know, that didn't make sense five years ago. When your nation will be delivered, the deliverance will be effected by the young people. I was, well, I wrote it down because I was not thinking about the deliverance of Nigeria as, as, as at the time that the voice came to me. So I wrote it down. And I watched patiently for a time where there'll be mass movement, where the will of the youth will be registered in a commitment for the change of Nigeria. And right before my eyes, five years later, I saw a wind a, a movement, a movement in the land that was not coordinated by any political factor, just a desire for emancipation. Then I remember the words of our God. I came to tell you that I am aware that this is the season that God spoke about our emancipation. I'm aware of it. Our deliverance will not tarry. That's why he said, you need to lift up the hands, the hand down. lift it up because the time of our liberty is here I saw those words begin to come to pass there was no reason why it should come to pass the sovereign hand of God went to work mass movement mass movement the chains of divination the chains of manipulation that held our nation it, it broke the ability to regulate everyone and keep them in line so that their bidding will find expression. That manipulation failed. So when we got the first sign at Ensas, ah, it was a great sign to me. As we mourned the dead among us that revolted, that cried out. I remember the story of redemption. The day Jesus died was not a peaceful day. It was a day of gloom, of sadness. But I came to tell you that the blood of those that were spilled at Lekki Toll Gate was not in vain. It was, it was for such a time as it is. Or maybe the votes in your polling unit did not count, and that's why you are in despair. Oh my God, there's something bigger than that. Men have died for this day. Men die. Men have died. And the fact that there's discouragement everywhere will not stop us from going again to the polling unit. If we need to do it ten times, our hands are strengthened. It will never hang down. Because this is the time for which the Lord speak that he will bring unto all salvation. Can you banish discouragement from Nigeria? Banish it from the land. Let the hope spring forth like a well coming forth with fresh water. Let hope spring forth like the rising of the morning sun bringing illumination and discomfiting the covering of darkness. <laughs> we banish, we banish, we banish every fear. Kobase kubi la cantelia. Iso se la bronde kenta bila mandala. Shamo teke zonde lo boboya. 
Adraske tobi salabu ga basket abrante babori. Ye kosa la bondeli. Ye na hanseli kopres kantelia. Bamakuria sika peradose lai. This is the time that the Lord promised that He will bring us deliverance, and it's a privilege for us to be alive to see this day. The forces of darkness they contend. The forces of light they contend. Oh, but the umpire seated in the heavens, he he has proclaimed that our liberty will yet find expression. So let every hand be strengthened. Let every feeble knee receive the ability. Because the time of our redemption, the time of our emancipation is upon us. No one is allowed to be feeble because the trumpet of victory will be sounded in our hearing during the course of this year. God will restore. He will restore the years that the caterpillar, the years that the canker walk, the years that the palmer walk, the years that the locusts have it. Life of Salaboko, Shemina Kantali, Rama Kusetali Bakaya, Esosendo Kombre, Antobela Kazezali, Yanto Santa Babola Kantalia, Esa Saleko, Esa Sika Lambroski, Ela Makanda Baboria, Shemina Lais, Shemina Kantela, Barako Saba, Barasantelia. Para cote manzeli, para masanta, escape limone, a mesonda, y acaba la bocose, y acá santelia, para cantar la babo de casqueto bonde, a mesia, a membrasquite, a masanta babo la cana, iscombolo, a la tesqui la boscalia, ebranta babo conia, a le cote, a la prosima, a la sabacona. A presco de basante, a presa de babola, a presenda, a precola basa mataya, en topenda si, la cata la babocotaya, en zapacatande, en zapresco melata, en zapatalesco, en zapacayato, en la cata boco la melacadia. Hey! Will you do praise? In the name of Jesus. You see, when God calls you into the labor of a watchman, he gives you clues. He gives you a few clues about the times, about what to look for. So the last time, I've said it again and again, not in secret, but in public, that the Lord said I should watch the time when this our airport will be reinstated. I should watch it. That it will collide with its most strategic season for the church of Jesus Christ. You know, it was opened briefly, shut down again. But is it last week? Last week, yeah. The final approval to open it. Okay. I've been watching for years, for years. He said, say, when you see that sign, when you see it, when you see it, so I watched for years, for years, for years. He gave me six signs, and I, I've, I think I've declared them to you. I, I spoke about the flood. You remember that time? Yeah, I spoke about the flood. And that was one of the signs that it was going to happen. It was a sign that the time is drawing near. But when I see that the airport is cleared for civil aviation service so it was cleared last week and all the signs the Lord gave me to watch have been accomplished all so we are not waiting for the generation of our children for our deliverance the, the thing is now it is now so we want to tell the Lord we believe you do your great works 
Sometimes it's by, it's by a strong hand that he brings his counsel to pass. It means there are stubborn people on ground that want to resist him. So he uses a strong hand. Sometimes it's by signs and wonders. He uses the supernatural to obtain the counsel of the wicked. Sometimes it's by an outstretched arm. That means he goes beyond himself. You, you know that this is God. You cannot trace it to the, to the work of man. An outstretched hand. The type that he used to render the Red Sea naked. Ah, he has so many options of how to restore that which he has allowed fallow for the demons to play with. When he rises up, he's either by a strong hand. What is the prescription that Nigeria needs? You know, we need an outstretch. <laughs> And now stretch out something stronger than 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 beavers beavers <laughs> can we ask that the lord will make available one more time like you did in egypt and out stretch out. Ah. we appeal to zion kobai se la monda Jeli bo kombres kavila, bo seli la kobila, shemi na kori ababa santo, ma pres kata kubela zelaika, prakasanda babonde, aske bo somenande, azai kompara, azanta babonde, iya kama kanda babosala, eskobonde, eska prekatalia, eska mansale bo konde brela, ambesi kobanda. I am outstretched up that it might be evident to all that your hand has wrought salvation unto us. The some carry a labo cosy. A ledo do sick. A ledo do sick. A bando sick. A yado sick. Priya skendo. Ogeza la boko salia, preska beza lia, ante kondere, ante shaminande, ante kobalata, ante sandalia, ante kura basanto, embregede, ya to semina, ala kuske tabre, manta kuska dai, ali kuska braka bakoske, aya to se, abriga bako santo, abriga dada basote, preska te. A campos, esquito pro, e camisca, e gabaganzo, e gabocorondo, ansia cante. Maha da cosa, maha seven, maha santo, maha seven, esta prega, esta balsala, esta coria, a la pro, a la bolsa, a seguria brantene, a cabaca seto pobre, mancantania. Asabata bababone, rakata di bossa katala, shemina ito kumbela, yata koska ta brenda babona kande, alaso se la preska tedia, eka banda babona, eka saba lanteria, eka saba babona, eka saba babala, eka saba baboli bala, eka saba baboli balata, ibra saba babone, aleto brondo kumbolia, a brenda basuri ala babona. Agabalanda branda babolato, asemina branda basanda, abarata branda baskubra e maiso, para kosela, e brasketa bala, e brasketa sop, e skabala talia, e zabina kantelia, a branda babola kande, asemina kanda baboria, e sabina konde, a ye sopre, a ye suka bande, e tenda, e zabogo bagalaite, e zabakabo kodomonia, e gabala bogodo yana basante, Ya talaba boria, aski bo sante, asi abrande, aski ababarante ya, ala koria basaka tali. In the name of Jesus, Isaiah chapter fifty-nine, verse fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. God has many ways of vocation in. Deliverance. In fact, that's his specialty. He prides himself as a deliverer. 
And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 14, the Bible says, and judgment is turned away backward. That's what happened. No judgment. No scale of equity. No scale of justice. And when there is no scale of equity, no scale of justice, there is no reference point with which we can measure accurately. That kind of environment is an environment where anarchy, where disaster finds expression because justice is turned away backward. It's a justice, judgment is turned away backward and justice standard afar off. For the truth is falling in the streets. The truth is falling. Where people have PVCs to vote and because a set of people perceive that those guys are going to vote for their opponents, they ensure that there's no voting. They say truth is falling in the streets and equity cannot enter. Next verse. He said, yeah, truth faileth. And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment. 16. And he saw that there was no man. And he wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought him salvation. So, normally, normally God deploys his outstretched arm when there is no justice in the land. When truth has failed. When equity can no longer be part of our dwelling. Where injustice is now our justice. Where falsehood becomes our truth. In such a situation, it means that the systems of Babylon are beginning to be established in the territory. So God will need to do something drastic. Something he doesn't do every day. He will need to do it in that situation. And that's where he deploys the resources of his outstretched. I've been studying and praying and trying to find out what is suiting for the Nigerian situation. This was the scripture I found. His arm brought him salvation. <laughs> his what? His arm brought him And his righteousness is sustained. So there was a prayer that the prophets were taught to pray. They say, awake, awake, O arm of God. I need to teach you that prayer. It is a prayer designed to provoke God to stretch his arm. Oh, you have never seen God fight. You will see it. You will see it not too long from now. You, you will be privileged. It will go on record. That's something you should tell your daughter that in the days of the arm of God. <laughs> Let me give you a scripture there. Um, awake, awake. Isaiah 51. Um, okay, let's do verse 9. This is the prayer prayed to release God's arm. This is, the, this is the prayer for Nigeria now. Because when you notice that judgment, justice, equity is no longer part of our civilization, then we need to call the ruling hand of God from heaven to destabilize the system and to establish righteousness. He said, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake as in the ancient days. In the generations of old, are thou not it that had caught Rahab? This is, these are the records of what the arm of God did. He caught off Rahab. What did he do again? He wounded the dragon. Now, when you look at this, our own case, it doesn't look like Rahab. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Marcus looks like a dragon. <laughs> because when you are deploying the, the hand, eh, you need to tell the hand what to do. This is not a situation of Rahab. Huh? This is a beast. A beast trying to blot out every form of light so that we will become customary to darkness. Can you release the arm of God? Not just to wound. In this case, the, the arm wounded. No, we need something. Are you feeling what I'm talking about? <laughs> we, we need more, something more terrible than a wound. Mm. Awake. Can somebody say awake, awake? There was a reference point to the way he saw awake. He said, awake in the same similitude as in the ancient days. As in the generations of old. We have an estimation of what an awoken arm can perform. There are records, chronicles. In the ancient days, in the days of old, that's how we want you to arise. Not in any magnitude diminished from what we know that the hand can perform. Is it not you that cut off Rahab? Are you not the same one that wounded the dragon? Verse 10. Are thou not it which are dried up the sea? And so the, 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 hand, the hand can dry up the sea. The waters of the great deep. That thou had made the depths of the sea a way for thy ransom to pass over. The beast must be arrested. So that the ransom again can pass on dry ground. We have been captured on an island where truth has been taken out. We have been dispossessed of justice. Because an order of impunity has been set up. So we call the hand of God do damage to the dragon and create a pathway for your ransom to walk over through the belly of the sea. Another way create for Nigeria. Let us see your hand and let everyone acknowledge your supremacy. Can we provoke that hand tonight. Awake, awake. Provoke it, provoke it. Provoke the hand. Provoke it. The waters of the great deep must dry up. Because it is time for the ransom to travel into their destiny. The days of our cap past captivity have been measured in the balances of justice. It is God's sovereign will that we pass into freedom, that we pass into destiny. So awake, awake, awake. Awake, 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 oh, I'm a God. Kova Samarantelia, Mesu Cabres, Yekoba Masike Talimonde, Asabo Korea Bahasimo Saminantelia, Yatobo Konde, his Cabron de Laya, Samina Copes, Rakasuntelia. Esuka bandeli abranta baboka samalaita iskobre kabala kuda amankaya amanseni amantobe rakeda iskobre ndo mokorobo sati maya konsa minale edo moko sokobi resu kabamaya reskita put on your strength O am of God shababalase Shaba beka braska tami, shaba bronde kampase, ala tobe kompres, yata kobe la kudia, beji kabonda abala kobe si, yato santoria, raka santa babonde, yaka basuke baila, embra masuka bahala tali, asamentoria, akambera sante, 
Akabon Selemon, Akabasai Ton, Akelobande, Sabinatelia, Sabinakota Babala, Askubra Catalia, Asama Cantelli, Abranta Babocos, Ibrahma Baba Sakaya. Oh, we give a praise. Ikobo Sinda Halaboria. Finally, verse 11. Anytime the arm of God goes to walk, this is what it produced. He said, therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return. And come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. And they shall obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Hmm. This is the only way we can end. We shall return with singing unto Zion. The reason why we will come to Zion and not to Einek is because in Einek we do not find truth. In Einek there was no justice. We had to appeal to Zion. To make invalid, to invalidate the authority of Einek. So that he will bring a position that is contrary to. Hmm? So that the redeemed of the Lord can, what? Can return. With singing. To Zion. For an everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy. And sorrow and mourning shall flee away. Our prayers will continue until swearing in ceremony. Yeah, we will keep. It's the time of deliverance. If our systems can no longer deliver justice, then we appeal to heaven. We request for an outstretched arm. Bring us liberty. Bring us salvation. In Jesus' mighty name. You may be seated. Welcome to the house of God. All through scripture, there are moments where there is a need for the sons of men to understand several things that angels are already acquainted with. That is the kind of situation that we have in the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 17. There is a deliberate orchestration to bring an understanding to men that only already exist among angels. He said this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. You see, it's not a knowledge that humankind is likely to retain the knowledge of the fact that the most high rules in the affairs of men. And so there are some drastic things that God does in the course of history to draw the attention of all mortal kind to the fact that the most high rules in the affairs of men. Hallelujah. So one of such moments is about to play out in Nigeria uh, where it will be obvious that the most high rules in the affairs of men. And you know what we are doing is Bible study. We are just studying the Bible, getting acquainted with the counsel of God. But you see, the Bible is so prophetic a book 
that you can understand your present by looking at the pages. If you are inspired by God, you could understand how to navigate your current situations using the light of the word of God. The scriptures reveal that the word, thy word, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Meaning that the word of God is capable of giving you adequate il illumination to um, be able to contain present realities and sufficient illumination also to see perfectly into the days that are yet to come. So one thing I would like us to take home is that there are situations that are orchestrated by God with the intention of bringing humankind to the knowledge of the fact that even though the throne of God is domiciled in the heavenlies, he rules in the kingdom of men and give it, it to whomsoever he will. He and set it up it over the, the basest of men. So that's the kind of authority that God wields from his high heavens. And uh, uh, humanity, because of the fact that we are used to our ways, we are used to our corruption. We know what we can achieve if we cut the corners. So we have so much confidence in our style and our strategy. Uh, to an extent that we are no longer conscious of the possible intervention that can come from heaven. When such a season comes, God will need to take us through a lesson that will register the fact that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. Now, we began a teaching yesterday about uh, Adonijah. And our Bible study yesterday is filled with metaphors. It's a description of a present reality, but captured in so many metaphors. And the dynamics of the scripture that we are considering seem to bring and to provide adequate perspective on current issues. Now, it is interesting for you to know that the choice of this scripture was prophetic. The scripture did not just come up. Are you, are you there? The Lord himself brought the scripture up. And that's why we're studying it today. Because we're gleaning light from the scripture with which to interpret the chaos that is captured in our current situation as a nation. So we saw the rise of Adonijah. And what exactly was his ambition? What did he say? I will be king. Amen. He showed up on the scene with an ambition. And he seemed to be so sure of the structures he had put in place. His boasting was somewhat like the resolve of the functionaries at the Tower of Babel. He seemed to have considered all the variables surrounding his ambition and he couldn't see anything whatsoever possible that could stop him from being king. So he shows up not because he's the most legitimate. I told you he was, he's the fourth son. There were four other guys before him, even though two had died. So at least there was still one before him. If, it, if we're looking at um, the issue of legitimacy, then it should fall to the eldest. So he was not the eldest. So he had his own basis of feeling, of thinking, and of saying that it was his turn. I will be king. So we looked at that. And we saw all the intrigues. We saw his fine political strategy. We saw his system of reconciliation to mend all the fault lines that were created by his ambition. And his plan indeed was flawless. He had already gotten the attention of generals in the army. He already had the sympathy of Abiata, 
that was in the courts of the priesthood, a very significant figure in the religious world. Hallelujah. And so even some of our brethren in the vineyard had gone in the night to align probably for in exchange with some valuables. But at the end of the day, somehow Abiata found himself in his camp. It's a, an intriguing political situation that we see here. But the only thing that Adonijah did not do is that he did not play what we call the politics of the bedchamber. The politics of the bedchamber is the dimension of politics that only the body of Christ in partnership with the Holy Spirit does in the most secret pavilion of kingdom influence. God is calling us as a church in the nation Nigeria to head for the bedchamber. As far as the political floor is concerned, it has already been annexed. In fact, the bugle of victory has already been sounded. And you could see diplomatic feasts were already going on. And the merriment of victory from the political um, wilderness was already registered and he was already reigning. By that bugle of victory that was blown over the land, Adonijah was reigning already. But you see, the Bible says, Who is he that speaketh a thing and it cometh to pass when the Lord has not sanctioned it? It means that your politics is not complete if you have not yet gotten a verdict from the inner chamber. According to the systems that have been set up in the land to declare who wins or loses elections, you heard the, pro the proclamation. And... Uh, so there is jubilation in some camps, there is depression in the other camps. But I'm here to tell you that the story is not yet complete. We still have a ground that we have not heard from, and that is the inner chamber. So yesterday we saw the parable of Adonijah. Now we want to go into the politics of the inner chamber. That's the title of tonight's delivery. The politics of what? The inner chamber. <laughs> uh, uh, fortunately for us, not too many will be admitted into the inner chamber. So the politicking of lies cannot survive in the inner chamber. We want to take our microscope and look deeply into the inner chamber in order for us to understand its politics. Hallelujah. I have a personal conviction, even though I'm not prophesying, but I have a personal con conviction that this scripture will play out. It's a personal conviction. Okay? It's a wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, has thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign? And David, our Lord, knoweth it not. That was a fracture behind Adonijah's reign. He was reigning without David. He had declared himself winner without the governor among the nations. His perspective of political leadership was pulling units, Pulling boots, beaver's machine. What's the what's the other one? I rev an eye neck. So he forgot that politicking will have to take you to the before the presence of he that is called the governor among nations. Hallelujah. So he obviously forgot that. So uh, the, the prophet came to give perspective and you know the person of the persona of Nathan in this discourse 
the inner chamber discourse. We are no longer on the political field. It's the inner chamber um, discourse. And uh, the persona of uh, Nathan we saw is the Holy Ghost because what he's doing here is giving counsel to the church. Now, what, what is obtainable in the political field looks like there is someone reigning. But it is obvious from the pause of the inner chamber that that victory did not derive from these quarters. So because it did not derive from these quarters, these quarters cannot support it. It doesn't sustain the victory, doesn't, sustain, doesn't seem to sustain the texture that can receive the blessing of these quarters. So the only flaw of this political maneuver is that it lacks the support of the inner chamber of Zion. And so the Holy Spirit was offering to provide counsel to the church on what is needed to be done in order to forestall that which was already emerging on the political scene. He said, get, go and get thee into unto King David and said unto him, Didst thou, my Lord, not, O king, swear unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. Why then doth Adonijah reign? So we are seeing something here that was not spoken on the campaign field. There is a secret. The ones are not wrong. You know, I told you, I told you, when, when Adam failed, the only thing that Satan was afraid of was that God has the capacity to speak again. Because the moment God speaks again, all... <laughs> It creates different variables, different possibilities. Oh my God. So he is the immutable. You cannot resist him from speaking. And the moment he speaks, a new strand of possibilities abound. So the basis upon which the Holy Ghost was counseling the church to address the Father was concerning a promise he made. You see, are you, are you there? I think I need to digress a little and tell us about promises. If I talk about promises, then I can talk about prophecies. I think we need to jump. Talking about the politics of the inner chamber. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 6 and we'll talk about promises. In the book of Hebrews... Chapter number 6, beginning from verse number 13, you'll find something there. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could not swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to take hold upon the hope set before us. Um, I think we'll stop there. So the Bible says that when God made promise to Abraham, you see, because Abraham does not know God, 
Abraham did not make so much of God's promise to him. So, Abraham was going to lose what God was promising him, not because God was not a God of fidelity, but because Abraham does not know God. So, God decided to do something that men do. Because the Bible says that all strive, the ends with men when we confirm things by oaths. Are you there? All right. See, those days there was a major ceremony that was built around taking an oath because it was believed that the only way we could get human commitment is when they are bound with an oath. So there was a major ceremony that was done when oaths were to be taken. And this was a ceremony. You will, a cup of wine is brought and then they will cut your hand and a few drops of blood will come into the wine, cut the other person's hand, a few drops of blood will come into the wine, then they will stir the wine and both of you will drink. And what you are saying is that as long as you are alive, you cannot go back on your words. And the place where you stand to take that oath, a tree will be planted there, is a tree of covenant, a tree of witness. Are you there? As long as you are still alive, that tree is witness of the oath that you took and you cannot go back on your words. It is binding upon you. So God knows that Abraham does not know him and in order for him to convince Abraham to get Abraham's compliance, he had to take a step further to do what men do, which is to take an oath. So there are two things now. Number one thing is God gave a promise. In order for him to look serious to Abraham, he went further to take an oath. Now, are you there? You see, God is a God of fidelity. God is a God that does the things he promises. So he doesn't need to take an oath. If you know him, you will know that his promise is actually equal to his oath because he does not break his word. But because Abraham did not know him, God had to take a step further in terms of commitment so that Abraham will not miss what he's offering him. Do you understand that? It is him offering Abraham something. It is him committing himself further and in such a way that if he goes back on his word, let him kill himself. Just to make Abraham believe what he was offering him. Can you see the effort that God made? All of those arrangements that God put in place is just to ensure that Abraham receives what he's offering. He enters into an oath. And the reason for, are you there? The Bible says, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath. Next verse. That by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So this is supposed to be the outcome of all the effort that God has made that we might have a strong consolation. That means our faith will be so solid because we know that with the promise and with the oath, God cannot go back on his word. So, part of the requirements of spiritual intelligence is to confront God with the promises that he has made. When you confront God with the promises that he has made, huh, what you are saying to him is, I was sitting on my own, you woke up, stepped into my space and then I didn't ask you for anything. You now committed yourself and said, I'm going to do this. Now we are holding on to you to perform the things that you have said and it's in your nature to do right and you are not a man that you should lie, neither are you the son of man that you should repent. You see, because of the responsibility that is connected to God's utterances, he doesn't speak anyhow. 
So if by any means he has gotten to speak to you, then his covenant is with you. It's as good as him coming to swear to you because he cannot go back on his word. So when, when Nathan was counseling Bathsheba on how to address the king, he encouraged her to reveal the fact that there was an existing promise and to challenge him with that promise. Hallelujah. Now, I remember it was in the city of Kano when a prayer meeting. No, no, we're not in a prayer meeting. I was at home. You know, you know, I told you about a long fast that I did. So long that my stomach was flat to the back. Yeah, so I got a feedback from God um, after like uh, nine months of prayer and fasting. Nine months of prayer and fasting. In fact, I don't know where I got that energy to do that kind of stuff from. But I just couldn't eat. And the days I tried to eat, I, I purged so much that I knew it was a sacrilege for me to attempt sampling the aroma of stew. So it, uh, it happened like two times. So I got the lesson and I left everything, food. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was growing lean as if I was going to die. But I did not eat anything. All right. Sometimes I, I'm giving liberty to eat a little. So I eat. And uh, sometimes I'm just giving liberty to drink malt. You know malt? And that's what it is. And I continued like that for months. And then I had an encounter. The Lord now said to me, in one of those encounters that I had around that fast, uh, that he's going to give me a job that I won't go into full-time ministry. If you, if you know me while I was on campus, I was a rascal, a radical for Jesus. You, will, you can't stay one day without seeing me come around... <laughs> with the gospel. <laughs> I was a strange guy, you know. So you would think that maybe after school, the next thing that I should be on the streets just preaching everywhere in the buses. And then the great one now shows up and says, you know what? I'm going to give you a job. Job? Yeah, job. I'm not asking for a job. Then he stopped talking. Well, eventually, you know the story, the job came. And then while on that job, the operations man, the, guys, the guy we report to now made his girlfriend our head. She doesn't know how to operate the system. She doesn't know that you even need... Those were the days where internet was not in this city. Well, apart from the operations that we did, we needed internet service to be able to upload stuff. We are already gone... Our systems were already internet enabled and we're not working offline. The lady that was supervising us doesn't know how the software works, but she was the head. And she didn't understand things like bandwidth. So everybody she will call you and torment you and, and threaten you that you will be sacked. You you have So, and we used to fear. <laughs> so one day I now said, let me go and talk, report her to God. So I was reporting her to God, praying for like two hours. Then God now asked me a question. I said, who gave you this job? I remember the encounter. The encounter that I had with God about that job, it, it took place before the organization was formed. Do you understand that? I got an encounter with God. The Lord sent me an angel to minister to me before our organization was established. So I remembered, okay, oh yeah, you gave me the, the, the job. Then I now thought, I said, wow, it was God that gave me this job. Ah, You see, the fact that I knew, do you understand? It came to my memory 
that it was God that was responsible for the job. The next time the lady called me, she said I should go to Lafia. And I said, oh, that's great, I'm going to go. But you know what we need? I need um, a Hilux van that is fully air-conditioned. Uh, I need security. The, the road has been terrible. Maybe a, a, um, a detachment of soldiers or police people to you know, ensure my security. You know, I have I've just, I got a young wife now, and so many things have changed. It's unfortunate, but it has changed. They are called in and she cut it. And she never called me again. Just because God reminded me of the fact that he gave me a promise. And that promise has manifested. And he's the one behind it. All right? So anyone that is intimidating me in that space, he's the one to answer them. He changed my life. The Bible says by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. So one of the requirements of spiritual intelligence is that we bring the promise of God back to God. If it came from God, take it back to God. And that was the counsel that Nathan gave. And when Bathsheba went before the king, she confronted him with a promise. Did you not say that my son Solomon will rule after you? Hallelujah. But now, a politician has kidnapped the throne. It's not only human beings that can be kidnapped, you see. The hope of a nation can be kidnapped. A crime of kidnap has taken place. Adonijah now reigns. And you see, it, it, the, the courts of heaven in the bedchamber were silent about, it was as if the news she brought, it was as if they, were not, they didn't know. Adonijah has kidnapped the entire process. Adonijah has received honor of a victor. Adonijah is currently doing consultations on how to entrench himself. He reigns which is contrary to thy counsel. It will interest you to know that we have a prophecy. We have a prophecy. And in a prophecy, especially a prophecy that unveils the destiny of a people, you will find embedded in it a promise from God. A promise for which God is willing to be committed. And the prophecy that we have as the people is that the destiny of this nation is in two seasons. And two different principalities will be responsible for administering the seasons. A time of corruption where Nigeria will be known all over as the headquarters of corruption. And I think we hit that level of recognition about three years ago we became the headquarters of corruption in the whole world. That means when people marry, we marry by corruption. When people are buried, they are buried by corruption. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When people get employment, most of the employment is by corruption. Huh? Even people's ages, age, age, is corruption. Look for corruption in everything that happens in Nigeria because it is the headquarters of corruption. So we attained that level of recognition about three years ago. And when we hit that point, we have stayed there ever since. But you see, these prophetic utterances were revealed by our father in the faith. The man that is recognized as the father of the Pentecostal faith in Nigeria, a Briton. Past Sydney Elton. The reason why some of us are going to be preaching in the United Kingdom, 
with passion and spend quality, quality years in our lives in that location is because once upon a time, God sowed a seed. He brought a man from the comfort of, of England. And that man shared life with us in the hinterlands, the suburban areas. And his grave is there as testament that there was a sovereign hand of God that was behind his visitation to the land. His labors remain a reference point in the Pentecostal part of the body of Christ today. And he did not just come with the gospel, he came with prophetic words concerning our destiny. He saw our future and he brought us counsel and discipleship. And just in case you stumble on any of his materials, you will think he's still alive prophesying today because his words never age. The spirit by which he proclaimed the liberty and the truth, that spirit still lives in those words till this day. Past Sydney Health, major become that we need to look at if we are going to fully understand and capture our corporate destiny as a nation. The um, cultural festivals that we did in order to acknowledge the deities of West Africa at some point in time was because we had too much money, we didn't know what to do with it. So we brought the gods of Benin Republic. We brought the gods of Voodoo. The gods of Togo. Hallelujah. And all kinds of things to celebrate. <laughs> and that was where corruption was filtered into our destiny. You might disagree, but I, I was born the year that they did that thing. I don't need to take you down prophetic lane. I have been with the Lord for a while. And I've heard whispers from eternity. And uh, even if you don't understand those things now, you understand the better by and by. So it's not a critical matter. You can decide to defer on that point, but I speak as a watchman. My, my call to service in the kingdom of God has afforded me uh, privileges to secrets, secrets that have to do with this nation. Hallelujah. So he prophesied. He said we were going to stink with corruption. The time he said that, you, you couldn't even steal as a public servant because our accounting systems, our checks and balances, our administrative... Do you realize that our administrative system as a nation is splendid till this moment? So even people that steal money, you can... They, assist, they will know if, if a government of property comes in, it's very easy to trace who stole what. Because the thing will be coming, 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 then it will disappear at some point. So you can, <laughs> you can always know that something happened there. We have a very powerful administrative system. But you see, it is not the system that is a problem. The person that is driving the system uh, can be contrary to the spirit of the system. So he spoke about the corruption that was coming, an era of corruption that was coming. And before our very eyes, we saw corruption creep into everything that is in our society. And so people that um, were public servants in the 70s, like my dad used to tell me that, do you know those of us that became public servants in the 70s, do you know that you guys were born into a different world? That's, that's my dad speaking to me. You guys were born into a different world. Because in our time, this could not happen. That could not happen. So I'm, I'm wondering where all this will end. What is the worst that can happen? Because we've seen the worst, and then worse than the worst, then worse, worse than the... So we are in limbo right now. In fact, we need to pass on quickly so that we don't see something else much more than... So we can relate with what, we, what he's saying because... We, we didn't see the good old days that they normally would refer to. But that's not the end of the prophet. The prophet said that a day of righteousness was going to come. And that day of righteousness will burn with so much brightness that will become the righteousness capital of the world. Yeah, it's in prophecy. It's there. That's why we strive. You see, some of you can be discouraged because you don't have a prophecy. 
You don't know that there was a prophecy spoken. But we cannot afford to be defeated. We cannot afford to be depressed because we have a prophecy. And the security of our prophecy is the immutability of the counsel of God. God cannot lie. That's the, that's the security. That's why we know it will come to pass. But it is quite humbling to see that God wants to orchestrate these mighty works in our lifetime. That's the joy in it. That is happening before our very face. We are going to see the shift that God has proclaimed to himself. We'll become the righteousness capital of the world. These are the prophecies I read. Are you with me? I read them so many years ago. Then I looked at our truth quotient in the body of Christ. How much of truth do we hold? The things we call our main doctrine, the things we teach today, how much of truth is in it? I ran a study. You know, I'm a researcher. I ran a study to find out if we have been trafficking truth or we are just part of a circus. And the only way we can trace the journey of truth is to find the teachings of Jesus and find the teachings of the apostles. And then compare what we have with what they have. So if we have practices in the body of Christ that we cannot trace to Jesus, we cannot trace to the apostles that they did it regularly. There is an introduction into the line. And that introduction cannot be sponsored by the spirit of truth. Are you still with me? So he said we'll become the righteousness capital. Meaning that the kind of ministry in the body of Christ that supported the generation of corruption. Are you there? It's not the same kind of ministry that is going to be in place that will support the generation of righteousness. That is, you can deduce that logically. So we needed to become uncomfortable with sin, uncomfortable with compromise, and teach people that the meaning of discipleship is to be willing to make sacrifices required to perpetually obey the spirit of Jesus. So even Christianity itself had to be re-pioneered because there was a version of Christianity that could stand side by side the corruption. That Christianity was thriving as, as corruption was thriving. It's not like a graph. Are you following what I'm talking about? The Christianity was prospering alongside corruption. Meanwhile, these are two things that are supposed to be vastly proportional. If true Christianity is thriving, then corruption should be going down the graph. But if the two things could prosper, it means we need to check the Christianity that supported that corruption. It is false. It is false. The Christianity of compromise that could accommodate the activities that Satan was building in the realm. It is that kind of Christianity that doesn't challenge iniquity that created atmospheres for this situation where truth is falling in the street outrightly. Equity can no longer enter. Meanwhile, the Bible says concerning the anointing of the Messiah that the anointing makes him love righteousness and to hate wickedness. That's what we call the spirit of blazing holiness. And it's only that kind of blazing righteousness that has the capacity to exalt a nation. Are you still with me? There are some money you should not receive. Not because you have money. But in receiving such money, you have traded with your soul. You have revealed that you can be bought. You have, you have revealed that you are without conviction. And a man without conviction cannot change anything. In fact, you are part of the problem. And the day where falsehood is institutionalized, truth will sound like error. Because everybody is used to compromise. When you come and begin to paint the picture of moral rectitude, you will look like a Jew. 
So truth is falling in the streets, the Bible says, and he that speaketh the truth maketh himself a prey. It's an endangered species. Everything is arrayed against a, a man of conviction. But you know something? Conviction doesn't stand alone. God backs it up. God himself. He backs it up. It will come by a fight. But we always already know how that fight ends. Because the hand of God will not allow truth to fall in the streets. And so the counsel that Nathan gave is for her to begin her discourse by a promise. And now behold, Adonai Jareneth, and now my lord the king, thou knowest it not. Next verse. And he has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance. And he has called the sons of the king and Abiata the priest and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon thy servant has he not called. Mm. That's a strategic selection. So the entire political discourse that is happening down in the palace has been adequately captured. Yes, next verse. And thou, my Lord, O King, the eyes of all Israel are upon thee. The third thing she does is that she transfers responsibility of the situation to him. You might decide to allow Adonijah reign. Even though you gave a promise, we are not standing to compel you to fulfill it. The eyes of all Israel where are they? Upon them. Just like the eyes of the servants are upon the hands of their masters. Just like the eyes of the maidens are upon the hands of their mistresses. So the eyes of all Israel is upon thee. What she was saying here is, can you as much as speak? You don't even need to come out of the chamber. In the darkness of this room, just do what? Speak. All right, go on. Verse 21. Otherwise, it shall come to pass, when my Lord the King shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be offenders. So this, the body of Christ and Solomon can suffer. This is another aspect of the politics that the king must know. Are you still with me? So these are the cases that she brought into the chamber. Started with a promise. Revealed the political situation. Transferred responsibility to the king. And gave him a list of people that will suffer from his inactions if he decides not to do anything about the matter. Are you there? All right, so. And lo, while she had talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he had come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, as thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne. Have you said that? Have you decreed that? Because the only, if you have decreed that, then our mission to the bedchamber is in futility. But if it's not an utterance that has come out of thy mouth, then all the festivities and the diplomatic covenants that are being set up in order to pile up the affairs of the nation are done in vain. 
So people were already slipping in letters and say, um, we're talking about uh, Pastor Jude for Minister of Trans Transport. All those, it, that, where, where that, uh, uh, during that feasting, when the oxen, you know, the cow meat was moving around, papers were also moving. So, okay, Jude for transport. Jude, okay. Uh, you know, Adonijah was already busy. <laughs> Matters of state were coming in. Letters. Compromises. Covenants. You know, he was in an air-conditioned place. Everybody. He was the center of attack. But the, the, the Holy Ghost was asking the Father, have you said that Adonijah shall reign after thee? There's a lot of Diplomatic interfaces going on. So many activities are already going on. But does this derive from the bad chamber? Because if it doesn't derive from the bad chamber, it's a mere human activity that will be upturned the moment God decides to speak. For he's gone down this day and has slain oxen and fat cattle and sheep in abundance and has called all the king's sons and captains of the host and Abiata the priest and behold they eat and drink before him and say God save king Adonijah. I'm imagining how that day was. They were already assorted meat. It was when I went to Kenya I saw camel meat. Camel. Hey. How many meats did I see that day? Strange meat. And because, and you know, my custom is this. When I find a delicacy I've never tasted, you can be sure that I am interested in it. <laughs> I am interested. So they brought all kinds of strange meat that day. So if I take one, I'll snap it, send to my wife and say, you are, you are not present here, but there's camel. You know, most of you always see me on the pulpit so serious, casting out devils. You need to see me outside the pulpit. I'm a good man. I assure you, I'm a good man. <laughs> oh! The guy was, ah! I don't know. Actually. But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon had he not called. So some people were deliberately excluded. So it was not an inclusive government he wanted to run. He had already marked out his enemies and he was waiting for the right occasion to strike. The prophet Nathan is still asking a question. Is this thing done by my lord the king? Thou hast not showed it unto thy servant? Who should sit on thy throne, the throne of my Lord, the king after him? And the king answered and said, Call Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king swore. Can you see that by two immutable things, where it is what impossible for God to lie? Go back to the scripture. And the king did what? Ah, who is this person on the council? Can you just stay? Okay, he's lost. Let me check my Bible and find the scripture. I was beginning to trust him. And the king swore and said, As the Lord liveth, that had redeemed my soul out of all distress. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, huh, It was not, this is beyond thy neck, this thing going on here. The name of the God of Israel is being invoked here. Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after thee. And he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. 
Even so, I certainly do this day. He invoked the name of the God of Israel. The moment, that's the true stamp. You know, when any letter you have, you have a stamp on it. You can have an next stamp on it, document. can be a certificate, right? But this document here uh, that is being generated, it's a document of covenant, and it is the name of the God of Israel that's upon it. You will see, if we labor, if we tarry, meanwhile we have signed up to labor for life, that the name of the Lord of God of Israel will go to work. We are still yet, the end of the presidential elections, in my own opinion, has not yet manifested. So that one should not be a problem to you. Go to the polls and vote. The governorship polls will be, it's already compared to be credible. With the circumstances, <laughs> with the circumstances on ground, <laughs> there is already, <laughs> uh, the, the, you won't need to shout at the polling booth. It will, the, your figure, the figures will appear. Mm, the way it is now, because the heavens are, are troubled. And from now till whenever, you begin to see things that were done in secret in the palaces at points, decisions were taken, those things will begin to come out into you. You'll be seeing. When you begin to see those signs, it's an indication of the fact that uh, the reaction that is taking place in the bedchamber is being superimposed on the politicking of men so that the counsel of God in the territory will stand. The reason, you know, I said it's a personal conviction. This, what I'm teaching you, is my personal conviction. I'm not prophesying, but this is what I believe. I believe that God will upturn the elections that just took place. It is my personal belief. You know, I am at liberty to believe something. <laughs> I'm not asking you to believe it, but my own personal conviction it is, is what I am reading to you from the Bible. What I'm reading to you. So let no man's heart fail him. Politicking is still going on in the bed chamber. And right now we have secured the attention of the king. He remembered that he's the one that spoke through Paelti. He cannot escape from it. We have brought it to open confrontation. Brought him to open confrontation with the utterances he gave us about our navigation as a nation and how that the day of righteousness is soon to break. So we are now asking again, are you in, in, involved? Is your hand behind Adonijah? Is, are you involved in this kind of thing? Because we know your way. You are the keeper of justice. The God of equity and, and judgment. You cannot identify with anything that is not emboldened in truth. Because you are light. And in you there is no darkness at all. You say that your throne is forever and ever because the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. You don't rule with lies and deception. You don't need the legs of a man or the strength of an ox. You are a God of truth. And truth prevails under your government. The keeper of the just balances of justice, of judgment and equity. We know your way. We know you are not with Adonijah. And so tonight, we have come into the chamber to ask that you speak by the name of the God of Israel. Speak. Speak. You know, Nigeria is a funny nation. Part of the things that makes it funny is that there were people that won elections here that never ascended the throne. Think about it. Some people that won and the elections were not even being contested by anybody, any soul in the land. 
It was an exclusive machination of the bedchamber politics that blotted such names out of the hall of fame of the leaders in the land. A power beyond the stamp of our nation was responsible for obtaining the implication of those elections. All the money that was spent for polling, polling units, the materials that were printed, in fact, there were even buildings were built in the name of parties and politics and all that took place. Nobody remembered all the money spent. The entire process was upturned by heaven. That's what we call an outstretched arm. It is beyond man. And that arm again, we await in 2023. And that's why I raised that scripture in the book of Isaiah, chapter 51. It says, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O arm of God. Are you there? Can you join me in the prayer? Because the arm of God is going to awake. I saved 25 minutes so that we can press. Uh, it, it might interest you that I had, I had encounters with Jesus in my closet. Yes, I have encounters, sweet encounters with Jesus in my closet. And the, the things I picked in my closet are not things I will discuss here. But I'm encouraged to continue this prayer mm, because I know it's the right thing to do. Hallelujah. He said, awake, awake, put on thy strength, O arm of the Lord. This is the arm that dispossessed Pharaoh of his palaces of government. Render this rule futile. Even his days were cut off because he sought to resist this arm. He said, awake, fuel yourself. Put on your strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake. As in ancient days, in the generations of old, had thou not eat that has caught Rahab and wounded the dragon? Oh my, oh my. Can we, can we cry again and ask him, awake, oh arm of God, for justice falleth in the street, and righteousness cannot enter. Awake. O oh, arm of God, so that this nation will not slide into darkness, will not slide out of the cause of the supervision of your great eye. Awake as in ancient days, awake as in the days of old. Awake, awake. You are the one that caught Rahab. You are the one that wounded the dragon. Awake again. Bring us salvation as a nation. Bring intervention. Let your name be glorified. <laughs> arise. In arise. Son of God. And let your enemies be scattered. Arise, arise, holy one. Then let your name be praised. Awake, put on thy strength. Put on thy strength, O arm of God. Yes, O come be sile mentoria. Shaminantoria kabasika bresko palahunde. Yakose kabarakuska teminai to kambrala. Sheminatose kabrisko fanenide. Gombre sekete beke dahiko sabakuntalia. Lamro ko sekete kombe la bobori asika branta babalama. Asakori abraskita barama ensomo konde 
liko barakuse saliko braske dami yala baba sotela esko bregede shamakanda baboria ante kosa malaite riska tabonda baratos kabenale esoko berazika brante jamina kaske tobri ala baboda we appeal to your bed chamber we appeal to zion we appeal to God in heaven. Yeso kendo borondo, shamina selikadia, anto bela suka brante, alantos kompela magada bogoze, azizo zanatande, anta kola basanto, shabala tose, shabala kanda bagoria, ata kona basika, rakasata babondele, Ambros keta bansala baboria, anakas ketombre, asabina kada baboria, asamantalia, esose la branda babola kande, anakose tebre, haya kota minala, lansa le kota mina, ale koske tabranta babonda, akabala takasai, akabala babosama, akase minaila, akabanda babonde, akasama bonda, akasabria, a seminal, Rakatanda Babonze, Rakosa Matalia, Arabosande, Arabakanda Babonde, Alamasa Bregadi, Rakosa Matala Babodakaya, Layakosa Menalait, Rekosa Bakunda, Alamosebria La Babocatala, Entama Ura, Asaiko Brantelia, Alabron de Kesa Makuda. Ala kose tapala kuda, ata bala dando semene, embrekos kabalaya, ale sombe, ika presa, iko para matale, ante kompe la suka baba. Lord, we call upon your name. Ia somo kone, iso koro boko, ila la kose tele. Lai kumbara musali alabros kote makado kondo ika sama kadia nendo robo soko tolia yaka kumbi saba kuria ekura basanto bres kote binala alakos kete mbre kete bukala abes gobondo koseli kabras ketolia akademro konde la habata is kumbi la disko praka mantalia. Ase tombre gadila kabarata babondea Iska bedo komparato Ikabai sa kanteli Ikabai sa somenante Ebriske ntoko biza na kedamri Asa manta babora kabalaita Eskombre parakasika Parakabantali Anto briska beko tama Anto baruka semenante Ambresco pelakinde, ambresco balose, ambresco saminande, ambresco teliate, ambresco paraconda, ambresco setai, ambresco samacondelia. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 22. I want us to say these prayers. Proclaim it and God will go to work. Yeah, we are doing our bit as watchmen. We have seen unrighteousness and we are crying. He said, But these people are robbed and spoiled. I mean, we have the kidnap of human beings and the kidnap of national hope. They are robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey. And none delivereth for a spoil. And none said, rest on. Will you be afraid today to say rest on? Oh, I didn't hear your voice. I said, will you be afraid today to say rest on? He said, the reason why these things have continued, the people are robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivered 
for a spoil and long saved. Restore. 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 Restore like in the former days. Restore like in the days of old. Restore. 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 Mighty warrior. Red in battle. She holds your name. Can you sing with me? Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. You are mighty one. like this we say restore 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 in the name of Jesus 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 upon your name we appeal to the court of heaven the hope of a nation has been kidnapped truth fill it on the streets equity cannot enter we appeal to Zion Oh, sovereign king, this is your moment. The power of our votes have failed because of the systems that are entrenched in the land, the will of the people will no longer be honored. So we fall back on you, oh king. Arise. Arise. Arise, arise, and restore 
restore, restore, restore in the name of Jesus. Show us miracles in the days to come. Miracles of your intervention. Miracles of your mighty hand. We have been standing before your presence for a long time. And we know you heard us. So our hopes cannot be dashed. Our confidence cannot be disappointed. We appeal to Zion. Step into the terrain. Pluck your hand from your tie. By an outstretched arm, turn the tables. Turn the tables. Turn the tables. And give us back our hopes. In the name of Jesus. Adonai shall not reign. You are my T-Warrior. Adonijah shall not reign. Say it like you believe it. Adonijah shall not reign. Hallelujah. Let's be seated very briefly. Amen. Amen. The rejoicing of the wicked is, is short-lived. And this time around, the church is on her watch. And the writing is going to be done in this nation in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, let's cause the offering basket to go around. If you're streaming this meeting online through the various um, social media platforms and handles, the Lord bless you. You're welcome to church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I would like to call on everyone that believe in the move of God, in the destiny of Nigeria, uh, we are calling on you to join us in this prayer campaign as we insist and enforce that the will of God be done in the name of Jesus. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 11, it says, because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. There is a limit a nation can bear injustice. We've had judgments, but we have not had justice. It's time for justice to prevail in the name of Jesus. And we are going to exert from the inner chamber and uh, trust the Lord for an upturning in Jesus' name. Tomorrow, we are going to be back here again. It's going to be power and prophetic service. And um, we'll, yes, that's a good place to clap. <laughs> and we are having our father with us. I'd like to encourage us, invite your friends, your loved ones. Just let people know that we are fully back and activities are on in full blast in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Um, as soon as we're done with the offering, are we done with the offering? Praise God. As soon as we're done with the offering, we are going to be seated for briefly, briefly, so we can have some other in-house dressing. Just like our father said yesterday, we'll be having about a 15-minute session to get us uh, coming to perspective regarding the mind of God and where we are headed and where God is as far as the church of God in this territory is concerned. Praise the Lord. I believe we're done with the offering. Media, please. Uh, thank you very much. Can we just write?